Welcome to Your Rabbit Guy. Today we're going to be talking about what's up. Not much. What's up with you? No. We're talking about ceilings. Oh. That's what's up. Ceilings in Revit are one of the primary functions of system families. The ability to create multiple materials that are stacked together to create the surface of the ceiling with structure. Any materials that you want to add to the ceiling, wood, gypsum board, acoustical ceiling, all of those can be added as different material types in different ceiling configurations. Each material and ceiling can be implemented separately in different parts of the room using boundaries and sketch lines. Let's take a look at it together. Additionally, instead of working in a floor plan normally, you would typically work in a ceiling plan for the ceiling to be created in. Because a floor plan is a horizontal slice through the three-dimensional Revit model looking down on the floor, a ceiling plan is a horizontal slice through the three-dimensional ceiling looking up at the ceiling. So that's why it's a two uh, separate plan view area. In this space, I'm going to go to the Architecture tab, Build Panel, choose the Ceiling tool, go to the Modify Place Ceiling tab where you have Ceilings as Automatic Ceiling and scale sketched ceiling type, choose automatic first. In the properties type selector drop down list, I have a couple of styles for two by two acoustical system and gypsum wallboard ceiling. I'm gonna choose the two by two acoustical ceiling tile. In the properties below that, you have a height offset from level, currently set at eight feet. This is the ceiling height, I'm gonna set that to nine feet. Come over here to this space, you can see the highlight of the room boundary. If I left click, that's gonna create an automatic ceiling in that location, filling that area in. I can continue to place as many automatic ceilings as I want to, and I can adjust those later. Hit the X or escape key to cancel out of that tool, and notice that each ceiling has been created as an individual item. So each ceiling, even though you create at the same time are all separated. Choosing the ceiling over here, I can actually select the grid tiles and physically move them around, vertically up and down, laterally left and right. I can also rotate those and notice that it only affects that one system, not the other. They're all separate. I can also use the align tool and align one of the grid tile lines to the wall. So I know that that wall line starts with a full ceiling tile or I can start with a corner and I know that this corner starts with a full grid tile and you can mark that on your floor plan or your ceiling plan correctly. Go into the architecture tab, build panel, component tool, place component, type selector, drop down list. In the project browser, I have nothing loaded right now. So I'll go to, in the properties drop down list. I have a two by two lamp type. There are different lamp numbers and voltages. Those will affect the out uh, the final output of the electrical service as well as the rendering of the space if you're doing that will impact the various lighting fixtures that you include because the lighting source will actually emit a fairly accurate lighting presentation so the lighting can impact your model successful or significant. I'm going to choose this 2x2 two two style here and this is a ceiling hosted light fixture which means it must be placed on an existing ceiling so notice how I'm not hovered over the ceiling right now it gives me a no symbol telling me I can't place that here. As I hover over the floor plan of the ceiling area, it shows a preview of that. When you're placing the light fixture on the ceiling, it cannot see the grid tiles. So don't even try to place them aligned to the ceiling tiles just yet. You have to place them on the ceiling first, hit the escape key to cancel out of that component tool, and then use the align tool to align it in place. And then you can use a copy tool to arrange the layout of the ceiling appropriately. Add some recessed cans in here. Again, these are ceiling hosted as well. Have to be placed on the ceiling before they can be located. And whatever layout you're looking for, place as many as that are needed. I'll also add, and these also come in 12 bys and 24 by segments. I'm going to use a supply, place that back here. Again, these cannot see the grid tiles, so you have to place them first and then align them. and that can lay out the ceiling in this form. What's really nice about the ceiling fixtures is if you adjust the ceiling grid tiles, all the components can move with it because they're attached to the ceiling. Even if you rotate the ceiling grid, they'll follow that format. So if you recall from using AutoCAD, how many times you had to relay out a ceiling tile by copying and offsetting, you don't have to do that anymore, which I really appreciate. And once again, each ceiling system is separate, so you can adjust each one individually with different components, different fixtures. If you wanted to change these ceilings to a gypsum board ceiling, you can do that as well. Without replacing it, you can change the type style. And very similar to the walls and floors, you can edit the structure of the ceiling by editing its type properties. This is made up of a gypsum wall board of 5 eighths of an inch, and then a metal stub 
solid layer of 3 and 5 8 inch thickness for a total of four and a quarter. And you can move that up and down the list, changing its orientation. For the ceiling, the bottom of the list is the finished face. The top is the typical structural area. I'm going to change the gypsum wallboard material to show a frit pattern of the graphic as you're currently blank or unable to be seen right now. So under the drafting pattern types, I'll change that to include a gypsum plaster patch pattern. And then when I click finish, you can see that gypsum board ceiling show up here. And I can change that in each of these spaces if they want to be a hard ceiling. Create a ceiling. I'll need to use the sketched base type instead because I'm not covering a whole ceiling area. Use a rectangle option. Start that back here and set the ceiling height correctly. So that's currently at a nine foot ceiling height with a two by two ceiling grid. Green check mark to finish. Creating that location. Create a ceiling also again with sketch base ceiling and then using a gypsum board ceiling type at a lower height condition. I'll say it's eight and then draw that in front of that area. Stay up to here. Click the green check mark to finish. Now I have two separate ceilings across this location. Cutting a section through that area. I see two different ceilings at different heights. This is the acoustical ceiling tile at nine foot. This is the lower drop ceiling at eight foot. So I'd want to cover that vertical gap distance in some form. And there just happens to not be a flooring on this level. One moment, copy a floor up to level two. So this would be the floor deck of level two. So you may bring a soffit wall up to that height. Go back to the ceiling plan. Choosing the wall tool. In the properties type selector drop down list, there happens to be a soffit wall type. Click on that. If I look at the properties of the edit type and structure, this wall happens to be gypsum board on a single finished face side of, in this case, the interior side where the other side is a metal furring strip of one and a half inches. If that's required to be thicker for structural purposes, you can change that obviously. But it's important to note that the gypsum board is on the interior side of this wall type. We're going to place that starting from level one at eight feet off the finished floor as a base offset. So that's going to place it at the lower edge of the soffit that we're creating. As we place that, we're going to draw a line location line to finished face interior and then make sure that that's being added on top of the lower ceiling area. You hit the space bar and flip to the other side. That's wrong. Make sure it's over top of the lower ceiling location and wrap that around. Then you go back to the section cut and I can see now that there is a vertical wall covering that gap between those two spaces and it's currently going up to the deck above then you can drag the top of that down just to the underside of the deck or whatever gap needs to be here for whatever purposes, you can do that as well. Those are also adjusting the height of the wall set offset from floor. Currently it's negative one foot and three quarters just based on what this uh, floor structure is made up of. And there's a couple of options that you can use to clean this up. One is to go to the modify tab, geometry panel and choose join geometry and select the ceiling and then the wall, and then the ceiling, and then the wall, and the ceiling, and the wall. And it joins all of that material together, which kind of makes it look cohesive and cleaned up, but I don't like that look. Instead, what I would typically do is I'll change it from a coarse detail level to a medium detail level. And now you can see that the gypsum board and the uh, gypsum line on the soffits are visible, and they don't really line up right now. So I want to clean that up a little bit more. To do this, I'm going to select this wall, excuse me, and I need to disconnect it by un joining. So go back to join and choose unjoin geometry, selecting the wall and the ceiling again on both sides. And now I'm going to drag that at least for the wall to be right above the gypsum board line for the soffit. There's still a line that crosses here. We'll fix that in a second. Same thing, drag that up here. So that's at least a better uh, graphical connection for that construction. There's still a line again that comes across here. There's a couple of ways to resolve that. Turning the thin lines option on, you can see that's very thick line. So I'm going to change the detail to something thinner, one and a half inch equals a foot and I can still see a line that comes across here. To correct that I'm going to go to the modify tab, view panel, and choose this option called line work. The line work tool or LW is a shortcut key for that. When I click on this, it allows me to change any line work to a different line style. So right now, whatever line thickness weight these are, I can change them to a different line weight. And in this list, there's a wide line, thin line. We'll cover this a little bit later in drafting details. Right now, there's an option called invisible line. When I click on invisible line, I can select this line for the vertical of the soffit, or I'm sorry, the horizontal of the soffit, and it makes that line disappear. Well, that helps, but I still need a line there to show that structure, but I can draw a line back over it using a different tool called a drafting line with a similar line style that joins across here and then stops the position where I wanted it to. So that looks a little more accurate. So there's some work that might need to be put into this view to make it look more complete and no view is um, stuck with whatever the view looks like. You can always use different adjustment options 
to make it look different or better or the way you want to see it. As well as on the inside, maybe this wall doesn't go out all the way up to deck on the inside of the soffit. Maybe you want to drag the top of that down here to just at the ceiling height or above that slightly. Maybe you want to add some batting on the top of the ceiling for uh, heat loss or even sound penetration. So whatever your design calls for here, you may need to add a structural kicker between this wall and the side of the wall over here or the side of the wall next to it. Again, everything is completely dependent on the design you're working with. But this now indicates a drop soffit connection between that room space and the two ceilings. In this master bedroom ceiling plan view, we'll be creating a trade ceiling condition, going to the architecture tab, build panel, choosing the ceiling tool and a gypsum hardboard ceiling. We'll be starting by placing an automatic ceiling within this room at a nine foot ceiling height using gypsum wallboard, at least to start the ceiling out and then we'll adjust it later. Selecting this new ceiling, choose edit boundary and I'll create an inset trade ceiling space, creating a rectangle with an offset of four feet and insetting that within the space. Creating an offset of two feet, setting that within the space, and left click. So now I have an interior rectangle and the exterior rectangle that's going to generate a nine foot ceiling space. Inside of that, I'll create a trade ceiling location. Ceiling tool again. Now I use a sketched base ceiling type with a rectangle, still gypsum board ceiling at a 10 foot height. So it's a one foot raised ceiling. I'm also going to inset this by one foot. So the 10 foot ceiling only exists right here at the moment. Click the green check mark to finish. When I look at this in section, I'll see of course that there are two different ceilings at different heights, but there's a gap between these two. In this case, I'm actually going to use a slope ceiling condition, which is a little more complex. With this condition, I need to create four different ceilings that actually slant up to that ceiling height on all four sides. Choosing sketch based ceiling, basically drawing a trapezoid shape at each edge and then in the draw panel using a slope arrow drawing a line from left to right on this side where the arrow is facing up towards the higher ceiling select the slope arrow and it says that height offset at tail end change that to zero feet height offset at head end i'll change that to one foot so that says it's going to slope up one foot across that distance click finish you can see a ceiling show up here go back to the section cut and set that too high you have to set that back down to nine feet dropping that down to the correct height so you can see how it's going to slope up to create that condition repeating that on all four sides looking at this room section across the entire span you can now see that the ceiling jumps up Add a taper, comes back down the other side. Where all four of these roof, I'm sorry, ceiling elements are separate. And then jumping to a sectioned 3D view of the same space, you can see how the trade ceiling is shown here. Again, tapers up on all four sides. And you can see the top of that from above as well. In this section, we'll look at preparing a ceiling in the living room area of this house by going to the 3d view to set up this environment go to the properties area scroll down to section box turning that on turns on the section cut box where i can then bring that section box into the building and i can see one side and then the other side of the building and the living room space is here. We'll be adding a vaulted ceiling into this space. Since the ceiling needs to be sloped in two directions, that is not capable in the actual ceiling tool since you can only add a slope arrow in one direction. One option is to go to the architecture tab, build panel, component dropdown list and choose model in place. This is called an in-place model or an in-place family. You can choose different types of categories of objects to apply to this family. Different than creating your own Revit family, you can actually apply what are called system families for walls, floors, roofs, and ceilings. 
So in this case, we want to choose a ceiling to create that width. Click OK. Give it a name. And then click OK. Now we're in a different orientation of the Revit software. We are in an in-place family editor. If you're familiar with creating Revit families, this is the exact same tool as the Revit family editor, where you have all the normal tools at your disposal within a project, allowing you to design a family directly in the model in situation. The big difference between an in-place family and a regular component family, you cannot get a family that is an in-place family out of the Revit model project and load it into another project. It has to only exist in the one project that you created in and it can't be output to an external family file like a normal family. So because that is a limitation, it is best not to use this method unless you have no other uh, source of action. Going to the Create tab forms panel, I'll choose a extrusion. First, I'm going to set the work plane of this view by going to the work plane panel and choose show. Right now, the work plane is on the floor and I actually want it to be against this back wall. Changing that, go into the work plane panel and choose set work plane. In this dialog box, you have different options. I'm gonna choose pick a work plane which allows you to select a surface. When I pick this back wall, it changes the orientation of that blue field, which I can expand and confirm that that is actually on the right surface. So as I expand around, I can clearly see that that is on that back wall's surface. Go to a straight on view, and I can actually turn that work plane off from showing any further. Go to the modify create extrusion tab in the draw panel. I'm going to use the pick line to select the ceiling line and then this ceiling line and this wall and this wall. Join those two together by trim and extend a corner and then offset whatever distance that you want the ceiling thickness to be. So that depends on how much material you need to include in the ceiling structure. For demonstration, I'm going to add a one inch thick offset. I'm going to zoom in closely so I can see this better. Make sure that you're offsetting that towards the inside of the room. And then I will join those corners together. Now I've created a ceiling thickness that follows the profile of the ceiling you want to create. Using this method, you can create as complex of a ceiling as you want to with different undulations, different contours. In the extrusion type, it has to be a continuous extension. If there's any other contours, then it would make it more complex. But at least right now, this will work. Set the extrusion start to zero, extrusion end to 10 feet, and I'll come exchange, adjust that in a moment. Click the green check mark to finish. And as I tilt up, you can see that there is now a vaulted ceiling within that space. And if I click on it, looking at the properties window, below where the type properties would be, it says ceilings, that's the category name. So what that means is that you can actually add ceiling fixtures and family components that are ceiling hosted onto that environment. That's an extremely important to allow this to <clears throat> help in your building construction. Now this also has grips on there that you can extend the roof condition, or sorry, the ceiling condition. And because I cannot see the exterior wall currently, I'm going to need to adjust the view slightly. When you are finished editing the ceiling of the in-place family, choose Finish Model, which closes the in-place family editor, taking you back to the normal drawing window. I'm going to extend this section box outside the building, and that'll pull the front face in further so I can see into that room. So now I can see the surface, and I can also see that vaulted ceiling space. What I need to do is extend that into the wall behind back here. You have to edit. Does it let me? Yes, it does. Okay. In this case, the family allowed me to extend this further. Make sure that you're selecting the right surface. In a 3D view, it can be very disorienting. In fact, let me change the view type to be hidden line. Maybe this will be easier to see. 
So as I'm using the align tool, I'm making sure to select that front face of the wall. And then I pick the front edge of the vaulted ceiling and then extends it to meet those two spaces. Now I've created a vaulted ceiling between those two locations. Also from this same 3D design model for the in-place family, you can take the same vault and ceiling design and turn it into other ceiling configurations. Selecting the extrusion, choose edit extrusion, and you can change them to any condition type that you want. Creating a arc shape for a vaulted ceiling condition is also cap available. Copy the same design down one inch and make sure that all of the edges line up correctly. And when finishing again, and finish the final model, you can tilt up and see the barreled ceiling condition. Thank you for joining us for this session of Your Revit Guy and talking about ceilings. I hope it gave you a good understanding of the use of ceilings within the Revit software, their uses, and how you can implement them in your models. And remember, look up. This channel is sponsored by Imaginate Technologies. With over 20 years of experience and more than 100 industry experts, Imaginate is well equipped to assist with any needs for software, training, implementation, including Productivity Now, a video training resource for many types of industry leading software. Check out the available licensing packages at Imaginate.com. Contact Imaginate today and mention this channel to get a special offer. Check out our previous videos below. Comment below and tell us more information you'd like to see covered in the Revit software.